Hey, it's January 18th, 2021. I'm just going to take a look at my winter protection for figs. Uh, I've upgraded a little bit from last year, so I've made a, a bigger fig box than the one I had last year, which is that small box there. I planted a second fig tree um, beside the Chicago Hardy fig, which had a really great year last year. Um, the second one is still small, but I needed a bigger box to incorporate both of those uh, fig plants. So this box is um, eight feet long by three and a half feet wide by about five foot four tall. So I can I can get in there and stand a little bit and it's got an access door on the side this time around. I had all the plywood uh, handy here. Somebody had donated it to me so it's thicker than I would need. It's three quarter inch plywood, uh, but it was free. And so there was the sheets of plywood and then the insulation inside too, which is I think it's an inch and a half or two inch um, styrofoam insulation. So that was the cost to build it. Let's go inside for a little look. Here's the insulation. Yeah, so it's two and an eighth thick R10 insulation. I've just put tuck tape on the, the sides there. That's all throughout this, this fig box. <coughs> uh, so here it is here. Here's the little fig, then the grown fig. It was planted last year. It didn't grow much last year. And then the Chicago Hardy's in the back there. It's um, it had to trim off the height a little bit and a little bit of the side. And I'll prune it more in the springtime when um, when I take the box down, prune it smaller. So I did have to lose some height. It's a little bit higher than the old box. Um, and the, the roof actually has extra insulation too. It has the two and an eighth insulation on the side here but it also has an extra inch of the, the pink foam as well on top. And that's where most of the heat would go out. Uh, so to heat this, there's a, a little space heater there, a tiny space heater, which draws 250 watts. And then the two light bulbs, two 100 watt light bulbs. And I have the two in case one burns out, um, the other one will still be there. It actually, it's been so mild this year. I shouldn't say mild, but for, for us, it's been very mild uh, the whole month of January. We haven't had it colder than minus 10 yet, which is unusual. We often get minus 20 to minus 28 Celsius uh, in January. And it's about the height of, of winter now. And uh, it's it's been plus two, plus three, and lows of the very coldest, minus 12, I think. But more more often it's minus five or, or so overnight. We'll just pop it in. Um, I have a little mouse trap set here too. I didn't know if any mice were going to burrow underneath, but so far no signs of mice or nothing in the little trap. Here's the setup here. So it's got that uh, temperature controller there, which come is set for minus four, turns on and shuts off at minus two or minus one. I can't remember. But in a way, it, uh, it keeps it just freezing, so there's not that fluctuation of freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw all the time. It's just barely frozen all the time. And I think right this morning it said minus, minus one this morning. So you can see the, uh, it's quite um, moist in here. Just frozen here, all this uh, condensation in here. It's often, if I look at my temperature gauge inside the house, it's, the humidity is often 99%. It's all the time 99%. If it is a sunny day out, I open the door and let it breathe a little bit. I haven't seen too much uh, mild, uh, mold or mildew problems yet. The buds are very healthy and it survived these temperatures last year just fine. Maybe I should keep it just above freezing, like at a plus two to plus zero to plus two or something like that, but this seems to work. Seems to work fine. It's also a gauge back there. I've been trying to monitor how much electricity it's using so I can estimate the cost. Uh, I don't think I've got it set right yet. It's not accumulating the, the wattage. Anyway, so that's the setup. And, um, you know, I've tried this in the past and it works well. This is just a bigger version of what I've done in the past. You can see on this new Negron fig tree, the buds are very green and healthy, so it's going to survive, no problem. It's actually a cool little... Um, I don't have a cold spot in the basement for for storing vegetables and stuff. So this actually had a buck in here full of leeks and rutabaga and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of a, a perfect cold storage. 
I might try to use that a little bit more in the future. I've used up all those vegetables now, but it was pretty handy for that. Yeah, so this will all come down into walls like the, the other box. There's some extra pieces of insulation I had left over where they're just stacking up on the sides here. This will all come down into walls. It's a bit of a storage problem to store this all summer. And here's the old box, so I kind of repurposed that one, which worked well too. Uh, it's a little bit shorter and definitely smaller. So this year I tried to overwinter a Musu Baju banana. Just open this up. So this one's set warmer. Um, it is set to keep it at plus two. So you can see the banana leaves are still green. It's got some dieback, especially up high here. But down low, everything's green. Same setup here, we got the temperature controller. There, with that lid open, the lights just kicked on. So this one just has the 200 watt light bulbs. It's a smaller space, so it didn't need the heater. And you can see it's very wet in here. It's, it's always 99% humidity. I'd probably try to keep it a little bit drier in the future, maybe. Maybe run a dehumidifier in there for a couple hours just to get the moisture out. Yeah, so that I think it's gonna overwinter that banana tree just fine and it'll have roots in ground and, and be ready for an early start. So that's a look at uh, extreme overwinter protection.